Welcome to Lipids Part 7. Now that we know about bile salts and lipoproteins, we're ready to look at the catabolism of fats and oils, also known as triglycerides. Let's get started. All right, so by now we've done the catabolism of proteins and carbohydrates, so you're starting to recognize the steps, right? So the first step, hydrolysis. All right, so hydrolysis of triglycerides, right, or triacylglycerides, so many names. Now the part that will be unique to triglycerides is the beta oxidation. And so this has to happen after the hydrolysis, so it's actually the fatty acids that um, undergo the beta oxidation. And then the last but not least, what they all share is the energy production. And so we will look at that in our bioenergetics, right? That'll be the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain with oxidative phosphorylation. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, with those other biomolecules, we said stage two was acetyl-CoA production. Well, what we'll find in this video is the beta oxidation of fatty acids is the acetyl-CoA production. So we'll explore that later in the tutorial. All right, so we just tested our memory on our understanding, and now we'll look at our schematic, right? So here's stage one, where we have hydrolysis, right? And so recognizing like, that the triglycerides will hydrolyze into glycerol and the fatty acids. So the glycerol will follow its own path to form acetyl-CoA, and then the fatty acids, WISP is the part we're interested in here, right? That'll be the beta oxidation. So this is the new part that we'll learn in this chapter. We're not going to focus on how glycerol gets to acetyl-CoA. Um, you can learn that some other time, right? And then, of course, the last part is stage three, where we have energy production. All righty. So thinking about it in words and then a picture. So um, let's look at what happens, all right? So how do we eat fats? Well, we got to chew them. So when eaten, fats pass through the mouth unchanged and enter the stomach, all right? So let's compare this to what we've learned um, about proteins and carbohydrates, right? How does this process differ than carbohydrates, right? So remember that carbohydrates they begin um, digesting in our mouth. All right, so you would want, and so in your mind, you should have the, um, the enzyme in mind, right? Right, it's amylase, right? So the amylase in our saliva begins the breakdown of carbohydrates while we're chewing. So that's why when we're little, we get constantly reminded to chew our food well. However, fats, there are no special enzymes in our, um, in our saliva for fats. So they just go straight to the stomach and um, start interacting with the stomach acid. And so now we'll look a little more closely at the hydrolysis and transport on the next page. All righty, so um, we, we've already learned about the hydrolysis, but I just wanted to remind you, right, focus on those carbonyl carbons, and you recognize the water will come in here, and there will be our hydrolysis. And of course, we'll need three water molecules and an enzyme. And so then we have our glycerol, Right, and our fatty acids. Okay, so now let's see how everything fits together, right? So the bile acids are salts and the phospholipids, they help to emulsify the fatty acids. So the lipase can get in there and break down those lipids. 
into the glycerol and the fatty acids. So, and even once we break it down this far, we still, right, we still know that fatty acids are not water soluble. So that's why we need those additional um, lipoproteins. All right, so the hydrophobic lipids get transported that way. So then the um, hydrolysis continues until we get smaller fatty acids and glycerol, which are finely water soluble. And then they can be absorbed directly through the surface of the villi that line our small intestine. So we just have to keep breaking it down smaller and smaller till we get to water soluble. The chylomicrons, remember, are the largest of the lipoproteins, and they surround the still insoluble larger fatty acids within the intestine to help um, facilitate further hydrolysis by the lipases. All right, so I've talked about it in a verbal description and then we can see everything here, right? So there's the fats from our diet. There's our stomach, the bile duct off the lip, off of our liver. And then basically um, everything that I just described verbally is uh, here for you in a diagram that you can read at your leisure. So I hit, I hit the big points and maybe I'll connect the big points to the diagram, right? So this statement here about the bile acids, right, that focuses right there. And then the transport molecules, right, um, four, two, and four. The, a lot of the transport molecules aren't shown in the diagram. And then the hydrolysis occurring. All right, so um, that'll help connect the written description to the diagram. Okay. So now let's get on to the new part, um, fatty acid oxidation. So um, this is a very interesting pathway that we'll look at right now. Get it in position. There we go. Okay. All righty. So what happens here is, um, we have our fatty acid, and it's in the cytosol of the cell. And the first thing we need to do is activate it. So the way that we activate a fatty acid is we are going to do a thioester formation. So remembering, right, so we'll take the hydroxyl group here and then the hydrogen there, right, and we're going to do thioester formation. Right, so the part that's not shown is that we would also be producing water. So we see that we can link the fatty acid to um, coenzyme. Right, hopefully everybody looks at this substance and sees coenzyme A. And so then basically, I think this is a cute name, right? We have a fatty acyl-CoA. So once it's been activated, then it will transport um, into the mitochondria. So if we look here, right, so the activation happens in the cytosol. And then it has to get transported to the mitochondria. And then we can begin, right, so then beta oxidation then takes place here in the mitochondria. All right. So let's look closely at these steps. Maybe we should write that right here. All right, so this is cytosol and then beta oxidation, mitochondria. All right, okay, so now let's look at the steps. Slowly. No oh good, we can just fit it. Hooray. Okay. So what happens in this first step, right, we just saw that, right, that we're having to use energy. We're taking two small, smaller molecules and making a larger molecule, right? So the type of enzyme that we would need here, right, would be a ligase, right, from the French Laguerre, linking. And notice energy required. Right, so practicing our skills for recognizing um, enzymes.
Now let's look at what happens in the next change. All right, so now we have our active fatty acid. And what is changing? Well, we look at the carbonyl and then we notice the t at the two carbons next to the carbonyl, we notice a loss of hydrogen, right? We go from a saturated to an unsaturated group. So, all right, so that's the loss of hydrogen and we recognize that as an oxidation. And we notice we have a coenzyme, right? So the FAD is being reduced. So we see that in this step here, we would need an acetoreductase enzyme. Okay, I think that's enough there. All right, now let's look at the next step. What happens in the next step? So we formed a double bond by oxidizing these two carbons. And now we bring in water. And what does the water do, right? The water now adds across the double bond. So we would describe that as a hydration reaction. And so the type of enzyme we would need here would be the lyase. Okay, what happens in the next step? Here we see on the carbon described as a beta carbon that we have an alcohol. When we look to the product, we see that we now have a ketone. So the, pro the um, substrate has undergone oxidation. And anytime we have oxidation, we look around because we know it needs to be complex um, complemented with reduction, and sure enough, we see that we have a, co a reduced coenzyme forming. So once again, we're going to need a different reductase enzyme. And then this last step can be a little tricky because it's pretty busy. So let's go through this carefully. We see that we have another coenzyme A and we look at our product, hmm, and we see that if we look here, whoops, okay, we see there's the 14 carbons, and there's the 14 carbons, and so what we can, as we discern here, we look and we see that this piece of the molecule is getting um, put together to form a thioester with here. So we're basically, what is this? This is a giant acyl group. So as we look at this molecule, we see that this acyl group is being transferred from the substrate to the coenzyme A. So we have an acyl group transfer. And then this part of the molecule here is represented here, back to the acetyl-CoA. So the acetyl-CoA forms here, and so that's how we talked about that the beta oxidation was acetyl-CoA production. So here is the acetyl-CoA production that we think of as stage two. All righty. So, um, so what type of reaction has occurred? We had an acyl transfer. And so the type of enzyme we would need there then would be a transferase. And then that starts to explain the spiral, right? Because if we look, we have our acetyl-CoA production and then the acetyl-CoA, right, it will go on, right, for energy production with the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain. And then what we have here now is we have a, a fatty, right, acyl-CoA, um, but notice with two less carbons, all right? So we can't call this a cycle. Oops, let me slide this up a little. Right, so it's not a cyclic react, um, pathway. So we show it as a spiral because with each turn, 
our fatty acyl-CoA will lose two carbons for acetyl-CoA production. So then it'll be two carbons smaller. So then it, it's a different substrate. So it goes through the cycle again, spits out one molecule of acetyl-CoA. Now the fatty acyl-CoA is two carbons smaller, so it's a, technically a different substrate. So each time a um, fatty acyl-CoA goes through the acyl, um, excuse me, the beta oxidation cycle, it's going to produce one molecule of acetyl-CoA and then a fatty acyl-CoA which has two less carbons. All right, so now that was a lot to describe verbally. So let's look at um, the next page, so where it, it's drawn out for you. I think it'll be um, easier to understand. So what I was doing my best to explain to you was um, captured here, right? That the, the fatty acids undergo repeat, you know, repeating cycles of beta oxidation until we get to the final four carbon fatty acyl-CoA which is then converted into two acetyl-CoAs, all right? So the final four makes two acetyl-CoAs, right? So for example, if we started with a 16-carbon fatty acid after the first cycle, then we would have one molecule of acetyl-CoA, and then we'd have 14. After the next turn, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, and then when we get to that last, right, this is the last step here, right, the last cycle, we had four carbons, and so we're going to end up with two molecules of acetyl-CoA. So a common question that shows up on quizzes and exams is like how many turns do we need, right? So how many turns? Right, of the beta oxidation cycle, or a, a beta, it's not because it's not, a cycle would, imat, would be a ring, so that's why this is a spiral, right? So there, um, so you can just reason it through, or a, a simple algorithm is you would take the number of carbons, divide by two, and then subtract one, and this would give the number of turns. Right, so the number of carbons is the number of carbons, carbons in the fatty acid. So for this example, right, we had 16 carbons. We divide by 2, so that would be 8, and then we subtract 1. So for a 16 carbon fatty acid, such as palmitic acid, we would need 7 turns of the beta oxidation pathway. Okay, and so then just to kind of briefly wrap up, because that's where we're headed in the next series of tutorials, right? Stage one, hydrolysis, which we're very good at now. And then stage two, we really focused here on the beta oxidation for acetyl-CoA production. And then where we're headed next with bioenergetics is the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain, which will be stage three. Okay, so that wraps up our um, tutorial on fatty acid catabolism. Please take uh, a little bit of time now to um, reinforce your understanding with some homework problems.